did I really know after looking at that poster what it was they were trying to solve? Does it make any sense to the average person walking through this room? Would they know what it was they were intending to solve when they came here? I don't want the top engineering you know, person at tech to be able to figure it all out. I want the layman to be able to go through and say, I know what those kids are trying to do. And the content was scientific or it was accurate and that it made a certain amount of sense and that there wasn't some misconceptions going on there. You know, we, we do want this to be true to science as well as the other STEM uh, content areas. Um, simple things like, was the text readable? Was the grammar good? You know, this isn't just a little, little STEM thing. You can't do STEM without English. I'm an English person and I'm really a stickler. In business, you don't go out there and put out a business letter or a poster or advertising and it's wrong. You don't say tomatoes, apostrophe, S yes for sale. So, you know, that, that's an important thing too, the text that they use. It, was it too much? Was I standing there leaning over all day reading about something or did I get the bullets and get the picture? Uh, we are in a visual society. They've been raised on the computer. These kids can work around the computer far better than we will ever probably do it. And we have to look at, but not just for the effects, for effects sake either to distract you? Do they help tell the story, telling what is the it that they're trying to tell? And again, scientific rigor, we have to hold them to, you know, we don't want garbage. Uh, one of the things, and I'll, I'll, I'll break all the rules of scientific uh, response, there's a site out there that JPL has going where kids can develop a habitat for Mars. And they develop it, and they design it, and they send it in, and they put it on the website. Well, they're trying to get inner city children and everybody who maybe, you know, haven't had the advantages of doing it. So they're putting things up there that may be wrong. And we're questioning them, do you want, do, should you have maybe a screening board that says, sends the report back and says, let's fix this a little better. Have you thought about this? Because we really like to put this out on the internet, but we don't want to also have a misconception that there really are men walking around on Mars. So, you know, those are some of the things that you can do to raise the bar for kids because they do need to have integrity in their programs. And that gets to those five people that he was talking about. And then just um, just those nitty gritty things that we would expect of all kids. Hold them to the standards all the time. And these are both, these would apply to the posters pretty much. Uh, those are the kind of things that an evaluator would be looking at from the poster. <coughs> Again, not not making the number one, two, three, or four of the, the five expo events that were there. But here's something that next year, I always liked to, to coach kids when I was teaching. I'd say, I'd find at least three really wonderful things about what they had turned into me. And then I'd say, you know, next time you might want to consider working on that introduction. It just didn't quite tell me what I wanted to know. So think about that for next time. And it's that spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down approach that we can all take with kids. And evaluators can do the same thing. So if we're looking to those presentations, and these kids weren't raised to be Donald Trump standing in front of an audience saying, here's what we did, and here's what we found out, and we want to share it with you. I mean, they were, you know, reading their notes, and they were mumbling, and were nervous. But so with those are some of the things that we can coach them into being better. They will all, anybody coming back is going to do a better job next year because they watched how other groups did their things. Betty, you know, it would have been, and this is for the future, and I know Doug's not. Done. We'll save it for it. <laughs> well, it would have been, you know, we did get the judges' things back, yes. but it was actually actually after quite a bit of time had elapsed. Sure. And trying to make the connection of what the judges wrote, which was kind of like all over mm -hmm. the board. To they forgot it. Probably. They did. The experience was gone. And, and that immediate feedback is something we might want to have them work in. And it might be nice for building in a half an hour after they do their presentations to meet with maybe even one of the evaluators, right. not us. That would be excellent. Because we don't want to do that. That's not the and level awesome. we want to get at. And the kids have to understand, not they're not going to be criticized. It's not critical. Yes. Just something to say, hey, you did this great, but you did this kind of stuff. And you could do that in a private room, like a little classroom oh, yes. where they, well, that one evaluator comes just in with that group and says, right. Let's talk a little bit. How do you feel like you did? What do you think you could improve on? Let us tell you. And then they walk out. Nobody ever knows. It was right there. And well, I'd be, care you know, I'd be careful That's about the, the private room. That's the learning. And, and you know, we all know well, that I think my kids something said on paper else. may have been met with really good intentions, but somehow it came yeah. out not quite as diplomatically as it should. And it could really squash a kid. Yeah. And so they say, I, 
I don't want to do that anymore. I really didn't do very good. And so, so that, that whole piece of how do we deliver that message to them is really important. And that's more like at your level and at that level that tech uses the judges to sit down with them. But those are the things, obviously, would you think, that you're going to look at during that presentation? And it's pretty much like the poster, other than you add the oral presentation, which is a whole set of skills we want kids to have. There's nothing worse than going through life being afraid to stand up in front of people. It's second to death, and it's fearless for people. And so although this project is really STEM related, that's where we're getting into that soft piece which you're going to be learning about this afternoon more on we make the whole person. We don't want that little mad scientist sitting off in the corner with his computer solving the world's problems. You know, we, we do want them to be able to, to be able to share their findings in, in a manner that's acceptable. So these are some things for your benefit that you might want to think of, and we will talk to Doug about that um, that piece about, about having some feedback for the kids right away instead of waiting for it when they may have forgotten some of those little things that happened during the presentation. We'll talk about it in lunch. So, um, I had wanted some feedback from you. We're going to have to cut that short, but I think it'll come out through the week as you want, work together on these various things. You know, how did the student assessment go? We've already addressed one of those issues. Um, how do you go about with your project selection? How much freedom do you give them to use? Going with some kernels of ideas. What's your process, which we're going to be documenting how each of the, you know, and I'm sure each of the other groups will do it slightly different. And then again, when do you start that whole thing of getting them on the edge of their seat saying, you, we're not just doing this for fun, guess what? We've only got two months till April, and there are gonna be people there who 